Hey, what's up everybody? Batjack JW. Thanks for clicking on this video. Uh, be it uh, good morning or good afternoon or <laughs> good night. That's the cool thing about YouTube. You can watch this stuff anytime. So you're probably sitting there hopefully relaxing. Uh, maybe it's your day off. Maybe it's after work. <laughs> maybe it's before work. Anyway, or maybe it's during work. <laughs> okay, anyway, enough joking aside. We have come full circle. Um, what do I mean by that? I, <clears throat> I've been making these grips for my John Wayne gun, if you have not uh, seemed to notice the decoration of the table. <laughs> I have been at it with this stuff for probably th maybe just a little over three years. Um, I've been doing it uh, after it for quite a while and how that story started and everything. Um, it, I know it's kind of a repeat here because uh, for, for those of you that have been with the channel for a great deal of time, uh, you've probably heard this story one too many times. But anyway, that's what the, we're just going to hash it out again for this video because in a sense this is kind of a special uh, moment and I'll get to that. Anyway, this whole thing started with this pistol right here, this pistol revolver. Let's make sure. Okay. This is known as the Cimarron Rooster Shooter. This is a, an offering by Cimarron, and they had um, put the John Wayne yellow grips on it. I first saw late eyes on this thing in a American Rifleman magazine that I got from the NRA. And when I saw it, I just absolutely fell in love, and I knew I had to have it. So, um... Called up my friend, he's uh, you know, a gun dealer, and I said, hey, you know, I want to get this pistol. And uh, For those of you that um, maybe you don't watch John Wayne or you haven't uh, you know, seen any of his films or anything like that, John Wayne notably, probably, I noticed that uh, the first time he showed up with it was in the movie Sons of Katie Elder, and I believe that was uh, around the mid-60s. He had yellow ivory type stocks on his grip. On his gun on his gun you know his grips are this yellow age looking ivory now okay for I because of all the laws now nothing here is ivory nothing is genuine ivory and according to what I've read neither was his gun uh, neither was the grips off of his gun but anyway he had these yellow type of ivory age ivory grips on his pistol and pretty much from that point on all his westerns he had had those stocks on there, those ivory, yellow, ivory grips. One of my favorite is definitely the war wagon when he goes and gets his gun back from one of the guys. Anyway, but so that's where, you know, the fascination with that started, you know, obviously. So, big Duke fan. Anyway, so I had to have one for my very own. And when I saw it, I had to have it. I bought it and it costed me. I want to say seven something, seven fifty or something for this gun, and I'm and that's no joke. It's not a cheap gun. And when it comes, it it comes with the you know this grip right here. Okay, these are the originals. Really cool. And I know there is very different uh, ones out there because, from what I gather. These are made by a company called Bar S, which are no longer around. Uh, Bar S or True Ivory, I believe that's what their name is. They're no longer around, unfortunately. And that's what the, um, or the uh, Cimarron company told me. They're not around. And I, I must say, <clears throat> um, now a lot of people ask me, why didn't you just call Cimarron? And well, that's what I did. And that's how I kind of found this out. Um, Cimarron, Really, uh, they. I, I even asked them. I said, "I'll buy a set of grips. I just, I just want to replace them." And they, they had no more. Is what they were telling me. They were trying to get some made. And the fellow that made these were, you know, is no longer around. Anyway, maybe it's different now that I see they're re they're producing them back out again. So I don't know exactly on your if you order one, what you're gonna get. Mine were pretty cool. And I must say, they're the best fitted grips I've ever seen. Um, I didn't really care for the finger grooves, obviously, because there was four of them, and they're really tiny. And they were, I'm left-handed, so it, it's made for a righty, but still, four didn't make sense, as the Duke had three, and they're really large, kind of like that. 
anyway, so as I, uh, you know, I mean, they, I got the gun, I dropped the gun, and it broke, and it broke right here. And there's a, uh, I have a video close up of that. This whole corner just pretty much took off. I found it. Luckily, I found it, and I super glued it back together the best I could. And it definitely is not. It's not a uh, you know hundred percent anymore, and that really sucks. <clears throat> so, I went on this quest, <laughs> and the first thing that I did, and I think it's what most anybody would probably do, is go out and try to buy some already you know what you see on the market, such as these. Um, these are made by Hogue. They're the polymer ivory grips. You can get these, and you can stain them. I thought about it, and uh, that's what these are. These, however, though, are not made by Hogue. These are made by NC Ordnance. I bought these off of Brownells. I think they were like 30 bucks a pair. And I read somewhere online, it was on a gun forum, the people that were trying to stain their existing grips on their guns that were white to the to a more of a yellow color. This is a deep, really deep yellow. Um, they used leather dye. That was not my idea. That came from somebody online and I just followed it so and I made a video on that for the, to help out anybody that was trying to do this to see what works leather dye does work because I originally uh, started off with a, another company it was not the NC ordinance ones and I tell you <laughs> I this is I tried everything under the sun I tried to use fabric dye, I've used food coloring, tea staining, coffee staining, um, paint, uh, in, um, it was, uh, I, I can't even remember all the things we tried. And I remember talking to a friend of mine, and he's a, uh, he's a musician, and I was talking to him, and I was telling him what I was trying to do, and he said, well, he goes, what about like, um, resin pigment he goes that stuff was stained pretty good and I said yeah resin dye yeah. and he said yeah 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 I said where do you find that he said, I don't know he's like I guess a hardware store would have it so <clears throat> we went on his quest and was uh, I was off work at the time and just got off work jumped in the car drove over to the hardware store and we saw it and I said jeez man that stuff is fifteen dollars a bottle <laughs> you know and by this point mind you I had already invested some money into this. I probably had already was in it for probably 75 bucks or something like that, with including all the stuff I bought and attempted to use, and, you know, and it just didn't work. And what and the weird thing is, like with these things, is it seems like it does work, but the minute you get some oil on your hands or whatever, handle it, it, it just starts coming off. Um, and, it, and the next thing you know, you got yellow hands. But so we went into this hardware store and. He, he saw we saw it and I was like man it's like 13 14 bucks you know and so he just he just goes well you got the grip with you and I said yeah I pulled it out of my pocket and he just went he opened it up a little bit put a little bit on there and put it back on the thing he goes well that clearly doesn't work there you go <laughs> and I said oh you just did that you know but but he saved me fifteen dollars we didn't do any harm to the product we just like you know but that clearly did not work so I went back to square one and I was like now what you know so I came up with this idea and I said uh, the last act of a desperation if you would call it that I said what if we took a sharpie marker and broke it open and drained the ink out of it and spilled the ink onto the thing he says he just looked at me he said that is just crazy he goes I don't know he's like I he's like that would just make a mess but so we uh, you know that night was getting late and so he went home, I went to the store, I bought the marker, and I went home. And I broke the marker open, and I did that, and it was a mess. And it didn't work. <laughs> it came off. It, uh, I don't know what those grips, um, you know, I don't know if those material on that grip was, I don't know why, how it was so much different than any other ones, but those things were indestructible far as staining goes or you know you could never stain them <laughs> so i i gave him a text message that night and i said i you know 
I basically told him it did not work. And, but, and his message back was classic, and I wish I would have kept it because it said basically, I hope to hell you learned your lesson. And I said, oh, you know, so I continued on, and he then mentioned to me, he said, well, so there's a, he said that for guitar frets, there's a thing that they sell, and it's for making your own guitar frets or something like that, something on a guitar. And he said, it, it looks like ivory. He's like, but it's not. It's something, you know, composite or something. And he said, well, you know, you could probably shape that. And I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, I even looked into, I even talked to some friends of mine that were hunters. I said, hey, you ever get like a bone that's, you know, you know, I, nothing, you know, all these wild ideas. What it resorted back to was me taking a look back at the originals. And the more I looked at this, and the more I, I started saying, you know, I said, this, for some reason, to me, this seems like some kind of, you know, plastic or some sort of, you know, and I showed him to a friend of mine, and he said, he goes, you know what this is? He says, this is like a, uh, a resin, and I was like, hmm. So, I had this idea. I said, well, what if we made a mold of that and made our own resin grips? And he said, oh, that's, you know, he goes, I don't, he goes, I don't know, you know. So he didn't tell me that it was it was so crazy that it wouldn't work. But I started sharing the idea with uh, the rest of my friends. that, And they all kind of said, well, I don't know, you know, that that's, you know, we've never done anything like that or, you know. So uh, the more I started looking into it, and so I figured, I started to price it out, really. And I started realizing that for the mold material, uh, all that stuff, the mold release, the all the pigments you need, and the resin, and understanding like it, I was trying to understand how it, you know, it's going to work and everything like that. To cut all that sh um, short, I spent a lot of money wasting resin, a lot of money, a lot of money wasting resin, a lot of money ma making grips, or I mean uh, molds for these grips and everything, a ton and. It, uh, it's not easy. It took me three years to get to the point where I'm at. And that was just because I was pretty much taking, uh, you know, whatever advice I could from, um, these guys that in town for that work at the, the, the marina store and stuff like that. And just because they, they are, they don't do this, you know, they, they make surfboards. So this is just like, to them, this is kind of like odd, but they said, you know, they, they're the ones that told me it's possible that you could do it. So, um, I mean, obviously looking at it going, well, this is pretty much what this person's done. Well, it led me to, in during the process of all that, led me to finding this company called Buffalo Brothers and Buffalo Brothers do it already. It's already done up. It's great. It's an awesome product. It's the John Wayne yellow. It's got the finger grooves. Of course, for my uh, left hand, it's on the right side of the panel. Perfect finger grooves. They're, you know, big, thick ones. And you can even get a what they call the antiqued version. And it's got even more darkening and spots all over it. You know, it's definitely more worn than this pair. So uh, you can see these on my gun in quite a few of the early videos because that's what I had and that's pretty much where it ended for me I just gave up on the whole red I shelved the resin idea and just went with the Buffalo Brothers thing because seriously at that point all the money I'd spent it was it, it's ridiculous trying to do this this crazy thing that I was trying to do and it really was not working out there it just it took it takes patience which is something I don't have and it just it was not it was not fun <laughs> anyway so coming along and I still tempered around with it. So now we're coming to the closure. And the closure is I started to actually produce these things and get them pretty close and get them fitted out. As you can see, I got mine right here and these on my gun, the, the Cimarron Rooster Shooter with my grips on it. And here's uh, some of my John Wayne yellow styled ones here right here no finger grooves though and it's pretty close to this color that is uh, seen by buffalo brothers and i started to play around with things like making one side darker than the other just just by a little bit i don't um, it was just something i wanted to try and, and do 
because I noticed for some reason the originals one side is one side is darker. The uh, yellow, the side with the finger grooves is a little bit more orange, and this side's a little bit more, you know, I guess off peach color. So when I reproduced my version of these, I did the same, and then this side's a little bit darker. So this is my take on that, trying to recreate it. Although, you know, I, I wish I would have added a little bit more. Uh, coloring to it, but you know then again, you're never happy and I must say that is the hardest part about all this is the coloring It, it, it the, it's such I never realized how hard it was to color to make this color now I, I Again, I'll say this if you you know if you're interested and you don't want to you know, I mean you, there is companies that make them, you know, uh, the only thing is their their prices up there and that's where it started hurting my budget was because I kept, I wanted some more, more pairs, but I couldn't afford it, yeah, you know, so it's just then I, I can definitely agree with them, you know, hey, whatever time and everything and effort they're putting into it, they're charging 75 usually and about 10 bucks for shipping or whatever and that's just what it is. So as I start to look at things and looking at this and my take on that, I said, well, that doesn't look like ivory to me. So I started to do my own thing. And I said, that, that looks more like ivory, you know, where I, I've done some, uh, this one here has a lot more, you would say, um, flaws in it. Because to me, ivory is a natural material. So as I started to do and work with this stuff, I started to think about it. And I started to add in character in the in the, the grips instead of it just being solid yellow, which is traditionally what John Wayne has. In fact, I mean, pretty much that's what it looks like in the movie, you know. But I started to do some things and add some coloring in it and do some other um, different things. So as I was tinkering around with this stuff constantly, um, <clears throat> long behold. I, on my uh, other channel, I started to think about it and I posted it up there, you know, just, uh, you know, maybe uh, if I sold a pair. And a um, really cool guy contacted me. He's been uh, watching the channel for quite some time and he's another John Wayne enthusiast. And we kind of connected through some PMs on the, on the YouTube channel, then made a phone call to each other. And in the long run, he came up with a, a price, and so did I. And we both agreed, and we sold them. I sold them right there. These are the grips that he has, and they're going on his gun. And we came up with that price, $50, and I straight up went up with him. I said, it's 7 bucks for me to ship this out to you in a small priority box. <clears throat> and I, and I, you know, and that, that's just not... And I've always been a stickler about the shipping. It's like, you know, these companies, they go, well, and I get this a lot on Gumbroker. Well, you live out there, huh? well, shipping's going to be an extra $35. Oh, gee, on top of the 25 that you're charging me? It's like, and then in the end, you get your box, and you're like, oh, wow, okay, this guy paid 15 bucks to ship this thing. Hmm, gee, I wonder where the rest of that money went. Probably to his lunch that day. <laughs> anyway, I hate that. And I never want to do that to somebody. So I'm straight up and up with them. I saw them. The shipping is right around seven bucks. I think it comes out to six ninety or six eighty, something like that, you know. So I just rounded it up to seven dollars. That's what it is. It's priority mail. It's a small priority mailbox. Once you ship it out, I mean it gets to the person in three to four days, you know, depending on how fast the mail is. I've even out here living here in the islands, I've received stuff from the mainland that shipped out priority mail and I've gotten it in three days. Okay, so I know it's possible and a small priority mailbox can fit quite a bit. Even if you want to go to the larger size, I mean, it is not 20 bucks, okay? It's like 12, 15 dollars, uh, you know, it depends if you get the really big one. Even I've had some uh, YouTubers send me some cool packages that came in really large boxes. Even that, they spent 17 dollars, you know, so we're still a long way away from 25 dollars or so. But anyway, so in a sense, for me, this is like coming full circle. I started this crazy project and I stuck with it. And what it led to me at the end of the tunnel was actually creating a product that was pretty darn good. Uh, of course, uh, for me, I'm not uh, egomania or anything like that. So I, I always just, you know, 
uh, whatever you know I say it's a hundred percent handmade so I don't use any CNC machines or anything like that to make these things I make these things by hand I sand them by hand I polish them by hand I color them by hand and everything so this is what you're seeing as the uh, thumbnail of the of the video here anyway so there you have it and I've sold a pair and I've come full circle on the grips and it's pretty amazing and that to me means a lot because of where I started with it three years ago when this happened and it being just I can't even explain the the frustration the pain <laughs> the, but in the end, like I said, it wound up being a blessing in disguise because it led me to figuring out how to do this on my own. And, you know, again, as even with uh, this kind of stuff, you know, even stuff you buy, just remember, you know, if you're buying them, even, you know, like it, just exactly right here is it can break. I broke it. And this is from the factory. So that in mind, you know, I've made some where I... I was really happy with the way they turned out and it uh, it took a drop and I broke the corner of it and in the end the only thing it does is cost me my time and a little bit of uh, the money to do this you know which is it does cost money to do this you know it's not the, the resin's not cheap but ah you know I was actually gonna use these you know maybe I still can I'm, I may be able to salvage it but you know there you go I mean imagine paying 75 bucks for this plus the 10 bucks for shipping and then dropping it and that's it so it just be careful with them that does happen uh, they're not indestructible it's not like a Glock <laughs> no um, all right so thanks for joining me for this long video and I uh, hope I did not put you to sleep but anyway that's it I've come full circle in a sense so on that note if you are if you do like what you see here um, you know give me a personal message or whatever and if you want I do uh, make them oversized so you will have to fit them to your gun but if you do want a pair let me know and we'll work something out thanks for watching I'm Batjack JW signing off for now like share and subscribe